proud that we have this woman here and that we're honoring her today. She has been a true trailblazer. I'm going to let um, Deanna Brown, last year's exceptional woman in publishing, introduce Kara Swisher. Let me start with the obvious. Who in this room doesn't know who Kara Swisher is? Okay, anybody ever raise their hands? The reporting is always top notch. All that she's done throughout her career to keep the story clean, to the point, admit when there's an error or omission, but then come back with what really is going on there. But Kara Swisher, um, let me be the first to congratulate you on the exceptional women in publishing. So I want to talk a little bit about abnormal, being abnormal, being different, um, because I think it's been a key part of my success. And so I think a lot of people try to not deviate from the norm and always end up not where they want to be because of it. Our speakers tend to be more open about you know their content strategies, their growth strategies, innovation. So I think it's one of the things you have to constantly be assuming whatever is the reality is going to change. It's been interesting to see um, the merging of technology and media industries come together. I, mean, I was talking about the internet, which very few people have heard at the time. So, oh, it's just a fad, it's a, it's a trend, it's going to go away, media is what's important. And I said, this media is going to decimate media. If you could just look out into the future and what is what capable. And I would show up at meetings, I'm like, why do you want another print publication? And there's something's occurring with this internet thing you might want to pay attention to. People want to read a newspaper on a Saturday. It's like homework. <laughs> I always knew that by working somewhere that mattered when it hit Kara's radar, right? And when I got off Kara's radar, I started to think career-wise, maybe I'm not in the right place. A lot of people see what they believe rather than what's in front of them. To have an active engagement with the people around it because it yields a lot more things, creates a sort of a virtuous circle. She mentors women, how she so, has been so successful, how she's taken risks in her career. Yes, I agree with her on everything. When I was at the Washington Post, I put an email at the bottom of my stories in the newspaper and all the reporters were like, why would you do that? They'll, they'll write you. <laughs> I looked around and I saw nobody I wanted to be. It's a really important thing to do. Nobody I wanted to be in five years, in ten years, in, in one year. Quality, accuracy, fun, fairness, all kinds of things. And if you stick to those ideas, you don't need a big brand attached to you. I think it was Ann Sweeney who said, consumers have taken control and they're not going to give it back. And they aren't. They are in charge of everything. And we think about that all the time. But one of the things I tend to do is, I, it sounds dumb, but I pay a lot of attention to what my kids are doing. Because they are really, for all intents and purposes, all of us in this room are digitally dead. They're, they're the point. And actually, if you're over six, you're probably digitally You know, the stuff that's being designed now <laughs> is for people who are about four. Um, so we wanted to embrace all kinds of revenue streams, whatever they may be. So we think constantly about the entire ecosystem of the news not just simply uh, not just simply a text version or something. I think the real danger is separating them out. Journalism doesn't just occur in text. It occurs in photos, it occurs in events. It occur you can make news anywhere. Every good decision I've made around media has been, this is wrong, I'm going this way. 